Okay, I'm just going to show you. I brought in the file. I've selected size small. Um, when I did PDF Stitcher, I selected one size um, on here and I imported it in here. It looked like it brought in the inch grid um, in here. When I'm doing pattern Tetris, I'm not going to use this inch grid. So, in fact, I just select it and I push delete. It gets rid of the inch grid, okay? I'm, I'm not going to need that. Um, on here first I want to show you doing a little setup for document properties we can go file uh, document properties it also is on the right hand side when you push the three uh, arrows right here I'm going to change the display units to inches um, and the page to inches as well um, I'm going to be resizing the page to my content later so I'm not going to worry about anything else yet. The only other thing you might want to look at is a snap. Uh, I like to have it snap when it's closer than a certain thing um, and that that's going to help later um, on there. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, as I was working in here, um, I noticed the lines were just not quite dark enough for me. Um, you can select them and go into um, the right hand side tab, the fill and stroke. And you can change the stroke style, you can change the pixels, how thick they are. It's a little bit easier to do in PDF Stitcher, but it can be done in Inkscape. I just wanted to let you know that that can be done. Um, now this one has all the, the pieces kind of <laughs> laying down, and, and that's totally fine um, on how you, it's just a personal preference. So the next step is to go ahead and start uh, unfolding those pieces. I've done a full tutorial on that if you uh, don't know how. Um, quickly, I'm just going to show you that. Let me zoom in just a little bit here so we can see what we're working with. Uh, so on this front bodice piece, I do want to make sure I get the marks um, that are on the pattern um, here. Um, so I shift and click just to make sure I get those. And I press Control G for group. Um, and then I can push Control D, duplicate. Um, and then what we're going to do is take that duplicated image and you can either flip it horizontally or you can flip it vertically. Now the way this pattern piece is laying, I'm going to flip it vertically um, and then I can take it and just align that fold line and I've unfolded that piece. Finally drag your mouse, select it and make sure to push control G to group that whole piece together um, on there. So now I've got that whole piece um, and I'm ready uh, for that one. And I'm going to go ahead and go through and do that to all of the pieces so that they're all unfolded and grouped together. Okay, okay I came across something a little bit tricky and I just wanted to uh, show this to you for a second. Um, uh, on this case, we, it, it, depending what you're doing, you want to cut it along the fold, or if you're doing a button down front, you might want to cut it differently. When you have this, you want to make sure you line it up correctly. So if I'm just doing a skater shirt, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, and then I select the fold line. I've already selected it. Let me see. Let me undo it. Um, so select the skirt, and then I'm going to select the fold line by shift and select it. I'm, I'm going to group them all together, control G, um, and then push my control duplicate and flip it vertically. Then that shows me where that fold line is. And if I'm just doing that, I'm going to line up the fold line. Do you see how I line up that fold line um, there with that? So be careful when you're doing this that you're lining up everything correctly on how you want to cut the pattern. So if I am doing the the skater skirt for this Edenbrook, um, I want to make sure that I line up that fold line um, on there. Okay, you can see now that I have gotten everything um, <clears throat> unfolded and duplicated um, as I needed. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't have the lining. If you wanted the lining, you would make sure you do that as well. Now, something... <laughs> I, I didn't really like the way that they were laying, and this is totally a personal preference, um, but I could select them all, and you can come up here and you can rotate all the pieces. Um, just so you know, if you have a pattern piece that's laid out away, I just like looking at it vertically. You can always rotate it when you get into Adobe any way you want it. Um, 
So it's really just a personal preference on that. Um, but now that I've got that, I'm ready to draw my rectangle and start uh, piecing my material. Okay, so most knit material is about 58 inches, but I always suggest measuring uh, your material first before you start doing pattern Tetris. Um, I got about two yards, it's about 58 inches um, wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my rectangle and I'm gonna be changing that color here. I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing a rectangle. It doesn't really matter because we can change it. My, I wanna change it to inches. And then you can say up here, it says change. Um, I can change the width and the height of my rectangle. The width, that's gonna be how wide your material is and it could be minus any selvage because you're not gonna be cutting on the selvage. Um, so I'm gonna put 58 inches um, for that and then uh, 72 by 72 inches. Um, so I'm gonna see how much I can fit on there, make sure I can get my whole dress on the material that I have and see if I have any extra material left over. Maybe I can cut out an extra shirt or something else with that material, whatever I, I want to cut out with that material um, on here. And it looks like I need to clean up a few things down here um, that didn't rotate correctly and that's not that big of a deal I can it was just not grouped together before I rotated um, so I can go back and fix that okay so here I am back I want to change um, that material now um, I like to come over to the fill and stroke and since it's like material you can change it to like fun colors I do not fill it because I want to be able to see those lines really well uh, when I am cutting them out uh, excuse my toddler in the background saying hi <laughs> on there. But you can change the color um, however you want. Um, like if I was cutting out on red material, like maybe I would make it uh, a red dashed line um, on there. Um, and you can also, uh, again, change how thick it is um, on here. And it's it's totally a personal preference on how you, how, how you want it. Um, on there. So I'll come back here and now I have that that red line uh, for my fabric and I can start uh, pattern piecing it together again. Let's come over. It's it changed. It. <laughs> it's changing my units on me. Sometimes Inkscape, you know, is like that. Um, and just double check that the width and the height are how we want it. I'm doing 58 inches by 72 inches, and I'm gonna see if I have enough for everything. And I'm going to ignore this canvas size, don't worry about that. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start uh, piecing it together, uh, making sure I have enough uh, room for everything. Let me zoom in here for you. And you can see how close it was getting. Now, if that's too close for you, it is touching. What you can do, the X and the Y, the they move uh, the pattern image. The X will move it horizontally, so you can do plus or minus, and the Y will move it uh, up and down, so you can see minus and plus on my fabric. Don't change the width or height when you have selected a pattern because it will change the dimensions of your pattern. If you accidentally do that, just push Control Z. It's it, it's undoable, so don't worry if you accidentally do that. Um, I don't like them too close I mean uh, it, it, it's up to you but um, you do as closer as far as way as you're comfortable um, but it is important to keep that I have that green line the stretch line um, still lined up if you decide you do want to cut and fold go down to the bottom of the tutorial I show you how you can still cut on the fold and do pattern Tetris right now I'm just gonna leave it uh, laid out just just for example purposes here. Um, let me zoom out again so I can get maybe my sleeves, um, see if they will fit in here. And now if I have non-directional fabric, um, I can maybe try to fit both of my sleeves and rotate it around. So maybe I will try to rotate it and see if it will fit in um, there. It looks like it's not gonna quite fit, so I will have to put it somewhere else. So maybe I'll just rotate around. But like I said, this is gonna, you're gonna get personal preference on how you want to do each of this and how you're gonna lay it out. Um, you're gonna get better and better at piecing um, patterns together the more and more you do this but it's really great to be able to know if all your pattern pieces are gonna fit uh, if you're gonna have enough material 
etc. Uh, on there. Um, so my biggest thing is, is, is this two yards going to be enough? Now I'm actually not going to do long sleeves, um, but it would have been a lot of work to try to get rid of some of these lines. So I'm only doing an elbow sleeve. So I actually have room uh, to go ahead and cut that. And I will probably make a note in text um, so that I, I know I'm only cutting an elbow sleeve. But that's how I'm going to be able to, to fit this on here is that I'm only cutting, I'm, I'm cutting that elbow sleeve here um, on there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all laid out for you and show you my final. Okay, now what I want to show you a little bit, it, this isn't perfect, but I have two examples for you. Um, what I'm going to show is how we resize the document uh, to our selection. Um, so I've selected all my pattern pieces and my fabric. Um, I'm going to change my display units here. We're going to come down to resage, resize page to content. Um, and I'm going to create margins around it. You need to be able to scroll around. Um, so I say at least uh, 20 inch margins around all sizes sides um, in here. And then click resize page uh, to drawing or selection. Um, and then if I zoom out, you can see that my canvas now um, looks like it's all around the fabric. Um, this is kind of what it looked like, the final pattern Tetris. I needed a little bit larger than two yards if I wanted to do the skater skirt. Um, as you can see up here at the top, I needed 75 and a half inches um, to fit it on there. And that was with, um, that was with doing the elbow sleeves on here. You can see my sleeves overlap a little bit, um, but it, that's okay because I'm only cutting to um, the elbow sleeve line. Um, you can get rid of some of these other lines, but it was taking more time than it was worth to me. I'll just remember or make a, a note on here in text that I don't, I'm not going to cut. I'm only going to cut to the elbow sleeve line, um, and that will give me that. Um, I'll have some leftover material of things I could put in here if you're looking for add, but I didn't have enough to do my lining on this, so I'd do a lining in a different fabric, or um, I could cut out different options. Let me show you the other option that if I do the rectangle skirt here, um, you can see that I was able to actually get it into uh, about a yard, I, I, I believe I closed out of that, um, but that's another example of pattern, pattern Tetris. Um, in here, I left uh, the two inches on there, so I had that as a scale. Uh, my fabric was a dashed line here. So this was the the uh, gathered skirt that I actually ended up doing on my final um, dress. I did the gathered skirt on here. Um, and again, remember, I didn't do, account for uh, the lining on here, so I could add that if I needed to add on the lining of the same material, I would just add that on there in your pattern Tetris so that you would account for the lining. That's an easy one to forget. Um, so don't forget that. Um, if you have any questions, this was kind of a really quick overview tutorial of a uh, way to do uh, pattern Tetris and it, each pattern is going to be a little bit different. You may run into troubles like not being able to delete certain lines like that. There are workarounds, um, but a quick fix is just to make note of it with some text and, and things like that to remember which option you're going to be doing or highlighting. Um, now, at least we do, I could go in Adobe and easily just highlight the sleeve line that I will, I, I will be cutting. Um, that's another way to just quick and easily um, fix that. Um, but let me know um, if you have any questions on that or ask in the uh, Facebook Projectors for Sewing group. Um, there's lots of knowledgeable people in there and they would be happy to help you.